Hi friends, I want to talk to you a little bit today about effectively communicating with God. Elijah teaches us some things about God's communication, but I also want to share with you my experience with God's communication. I've been helping people for many years now, 20 some years, helping people communicate with God, teaching them how to effectively speak, listen, and respond to God. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. First of all, God's voice, when He speaks, He most generally doesn't speak audible. Sometimes people hear Him in such a bold fashion that they would swear it's audible. I know I've had a couple occasions like that when God spoke to me and just really shook me. Not really like in a negative way, just He, he made a statement and I got it quickly. Now, it seemed like it was audible to me, but <clears throat> uh, nobody was there to prove it to me. And so... Uh, I, I, I want to tell you that I don't think God speaks audible all that much, and there are several good reasons why. I'm looking at my computer uh, where I did a teaching on effectively communicating with God. One, one thing we, I want you to understand is <clears throat> God generally speaks right to your mind. He speaks right in your mind. Think of this. He's dwelling in you by His Spirit. If you're born again, if you've asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, He's dwelling inside you in your spirit. It's what gives you life. It's what brings life to you. Now, if you're not born again, you really need to stop and consider, maybe I need to connect to this God who wants to help me, who, want, who already knows me, and merely just wants to help you from here on out. Um, and if you, if you want, if very simply, just tell Jesus that you want to be in His family. And um, you call on his name. The Bible says, all who call on his name shall be saved. So I want that to happen for you because when you know him, it's easier to, <laughs> he'll speak, he speaks to us even if we don't know him. That's how we get called to the Father. But it's much simpler when he lives on the inside of you. Now think about it. I want you, I want you to get this. He speaks to your mind. Here's, here's one huge reason why. Many years ago, I asked God, I said, Lord, why don't you just speak audible in a distinguishable voice so we can hear you? And he said, because then I would have to compete with the volume of the world. And you think about it, that's true. If God would begin to speak audible, the world's just going to get louder and flashier. I think that's why the world's so loud and flashy right now, because most of the time, uh, it's, it's the enemy, <laughs> the God of this age, the enemy of us believers who, uh, who's trying to stand between us and God. And, and he, don't want, he don't want you to hear God. He don't want you to talk to God. But God wants you to talk to him. And, and there's so many wonderful benefits. If you call on the name of the Lord, if you, if you begin to communicate with him, I'm telling you, he can do awesome things in your life and through your life. Um, so he talks right to your mind. Uh, he's in you, he talks to your mind, and he told me another thing um, some time ago now. But he said, I'm more concerned, um, or I'm concerned with more people than just you. Now, you think about this if you're in a church service and God was speaking to you audibly, and he's probably speaking to the woman in front of you, and the guy beside you, and the woman behind you. And, uh, you know, there's other people there. Well, if he's speaking to everybody audible, wouldn't that be kind of a confusing mess? Nobody would get anything. Preacher would have to jack up the sound system so you'd hear him, and everybody would miss it all, actually. So, no, God doesn't speak so much audible. Now, if you were out all alone, and he had to get you to stop or do something, and he may speak bold enough, like he has me on several occasions, that you'd almost bet. You'd bet that it was audible. But uh, chances are, he just spoke boldly into your mind. Now, he will not compete with the world's volume. I already told you that. And he is concerned with more than just me. Two good reasons why he speaks right into the mind. Now, when he speaks, does it rattle the rafters or shake the floor? And the answer is no. He speaks in a very small, tiny voice in your mind. Just thoughts come to your mind, and all of a sudden you have information that you didn't have before. Uh, 
Now here's a re reason why it's so important to learn how to make your mind be still. Keep your mind quiet. And that's going to be in a future teaching. I'm going to teach how to uh, quiet your mind and how to control the thoughts of your mind because that's very, very important. If you go through life all the time, your mind just running willy-nilly, it's busy and you're going to have a hard time ever hearing from God. I've had some people tell me, Pastor, it's uh, the only time I hear from God is either when I'm just about to go to sleep or I'm just waking up. Why is that? Well, the reason is their minds are busy all day. When they're up and about life, their minds are busy and uh, when they're about to go to sleep or just waking up, their minds are totally quiet. When your mind's quiet, God speaks to you very clearly and very quickly. So he doesn't speak audible. He doesn't. And some people, here's a question I get all the time. When I'm talking to people, helping them learn how to speak to God, they say, well, how do I know what comes into my mind if it's God or the devil? Well, let me ask you this. Who were you talking to? If you were speaking to God, then the answer is going to be it's God's response. Because do you think the devil is really big enough and powerful enough to stand between you and God, being he's living in you? See, if, if you speak to God, the Bible says, submit to God and resist the devil, he'll flee. Well, if you're talking to God, you're about as submitted to God as you're ever going to be. And so when you talk to God, you're submitting to God. And so the devil can't get between you and him. He flees. He runs. He don't want you. He don't even want to be around you when you hear from God. Believe me that. Um, another thing, his voice doesn't shake anything up. Now, he has shaken me up a couple times. <coughs> Excuse me. He shook me up a couple times. And that's when I told you he, he spoke loud enough. I was on an elevator one time and he spoke to me so loud. I, I mean, so clear and so distinct. I thought it was audible. And... Uh, Nobody else was in that elevator but me. So I just have to <laughs> remember that and realize that he just was wanting to get my attention really clear. I hadn't followed him to the letter and there was something he wanted me to do while I was there. And so he spoke very, very clear to me. Now, how can you be sure it's God's voice? Well, there's a good way to test it. If you get into a habit of speaking aloud what God says or what you think he says, then you're going to know it the moment you open your mouth to speak it. If it wasn't God, it probably won't even come out of your mouth. But if it was God, you're going to feel it. When you speak what God says, you feel it. You know it was God. Now, here's another thing that I want to talk to you about. How do you know if it's His voice? The Bible says in John 10, 27, My sheep, this is Jesus' words, My sheep hear my voice. The enemies... Uh, he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So now, who do you belong to? Do you belong to Jesus? Or have you not yet made the commitment to call on God and to allow Jesus to be a part of your life? Because Jesus didn't say they might hear my voice or they might learn to hear my voice. No, he's very clear, very distinct. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So it's just a matter of fact that God says you're going to be able to hear his voice. Now, you've got to just get that in your mind and believe that. And when you think God said something to you, speak it aloud. And I'll bet you anything that you rarely, if you ever miss it, you'll never miss it. But if you do, it'll be very, very rare. But if you missed it, here's the way to do it. Lord, <laughs> I didn't clear, clearly hear you, I guess. And so, Father or Jesus, would you speak that to me again? And then with a quiet mind, just give him a couple seconds. And the next words back into your mind will be his response. Now, another thing I want you to learn. When you're talking to God, I teach everybody to speak to God audibly. Uh, especially when they're just learning. Uh, now, you may have been in Christ for a number of years. But... Uh, have you ever had a communication with God where He speaks to you, you speak to Him, He speaks to you, you speak to Him? Back and forth, just like two, two uh, humans talking to each other? See, that's the kind of communication Jesus wants you to have with Him. He wants you to be comfortable enough in His presence that he, he, you can speak to Him as a friend. He is a friend. Of course, we honor Him. We don't disrespect and we don't uh, do anything of that nature. It's silly. He's God. He's the creator of heaven and earth. So you got to recognize that when you speak to God, I want you to learn 
to speak to him audibly. Now, I tell you, you don't have to be loud. Jeremiah 33.3 is a wonderful teaching. If you haven't looked at it, you need to look at it. He says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Some translations say, I'll tell you great secrets or great truths you do not know. One translation I like very much says, call to me and I'll answer you. And I'll tell, tell you great and mighty truths you have no other way of finding out. You see, God knows things about you and I that he wants you and I to know. And there's no other way you're going to find out except by communication with God. So speak aloud. Now, here's, don't, don't have to worry about volume. God's not deaf. You can whisper. You can just whisper. If you're in a crowd and you got people all around you, here's what I want you to understand. Make sure your thoughts cross your lips. Now, they can cross your lips in a very small whisper. See, here's something that takes place, and I don't understand the biology of it all. But when I'm thinking, my mind's in, <laughs> I call it a gear, my mind's in one gear. When I go to speak, I got to shift gears. I got to flip a switch. Something's got to happen that tells me to take what I'm thinking and speak it out loud. And speaking out loud qualifies for communication. Thinking does not. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Doesn't say you have not because you think not. He says, you have not because you ask not. Teaching us to pray, in other words. And so, when you speak, speak aloud. Make sure your thoughts cross your lips. Now, here's another thing. I want you, in that Jeremiah 33, 3, the word that translated into call, call on me, the word call comes from a Hebrew word of Q-A-R-A. Quara, I guess. Q-A-R-A. And here's the meaning of it. The basic meaning is the enunciation of a specific vocal or message addressed to a specific recipient and intended to elicit a specific response. In other words, somebody's calling on somebody wanting to get a message across to them and hoping to get a response from them. And that's what this word Korah, Hebrew word is, that was translated into the e uh, English word of call. Call on me, he says. In other words, he's saying, get my attention. Talk to me. Come to me with a reason. Come to me wanting to get a specific response. And he said, if you call on me, listen, I'll respond to you and I'll answer you. I just said a second ago, make sure your thoughts cross your lips. And understand this, that if your mind is busy you're probably not going to hear from God very much. You've got to learn to quiet your mind. Again, that's in a future teaching. We're going to be doing that here before too long. But a busy mind rarely, if ever, hears from God. I'm going to help you try something here in a minute, and you'll hear from God. And then uh, maybe you'll, you'll be able to do that after, after I'm uh, done yakking here. All right. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 7 that the carnal mind or the fleshly mind, man's flesh, is at enmity with God. That means there's a perfect battle going on between your mind and God. There's a, there's a hatred in your mind. The carnal mind of man is at enmity with God. It does not, it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Your spirit man on the inside is the one that wants to talk to God. Your flesh, your mind, doesn't want you to talk to God. If you just let your mind run and you don't ever talk to God and get His direction, uh, your mind's going to lead you away from God. And so, learn to make your mind be quiet. Learn to get a hold of that thing and speak to God audibly. Now, here's what I want you to know. If you want a specific answer for something, then ask a specific question. It's amazing to me the people the, the people that come to me with questions and I'll say, well, what'd God say? Well, I haven't asked God. Well, why haven't you asked God? I don't know. I just never thought of it. See, that's a habit we've got to form. I think a lot of times we don't ask God the questions we have because I think in some cases we might be a little afraid of what God might say. Now, I want to tell you, He'll never put you down. He'll never do anything but build you up. He'll always be there to help you. He may not give you your way. 
you know, Daddy, can I have a pink Cadillac and can I do this and that? No. Well, you may be afraid of that. No. But the key is he'll always answer you in what's best for you. Long haul. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, we'll get into those when we talk about quieting the mind. All right, friends. Here's what I want you to try to do for a couple of seconds. I want you to sit down, close your eyes, quiet your mind. Just tell your mind to hush. You're going to hear me say that a lot over the next few messages that I minister. Tell your mind to hush. And then I want you to speak aloud. You don't have to be loud, but it needs to come out of your mouth, your thoughts crossing your lips, remember? Jesus, can we speak together? Just say those words. Jesus, can we speak together? Now, with a quiet mind, those words that come right back into your mind after you've said that is, is Jesus' response. Speak aloud what he says. You know, he's always going to respond to that. Jesus, may we speak together. And in me, when I say that, he says, of course. Uh, he may say something different to you. He may just say, yes. He may just say <laughs> something simpler. His, his messages aren't deep theological things. He speaks, remember this, he speaks so that every human being, no matter how, age, no matter how what their age, no matter what their education level, he speaks so that every human being can communicate with him. He's promised that your his truths will make us free. Well, his truths are going to come from his mouth. He's going to speak to us. So, I hope you had some success with that quiet in your mind telling Jesus, Lord, can we speak together? Ask him a simple question. How about this one? Jesus, do you love me? And I know what his answer is going to be. And you're going to say, well, I know what his answer is going to be too. But how do I know it's God? Speak it out of your mouth. You'll know exactly. If, if those words come into your mind, yes, I do, or of course I do, or absolutely, whatever. If affirmative words come into your mind, speak them. Speak them out loud. Recognize. And then if I were you, I'd say, Jesus, was that you or was that my mind? You know, learn to work with him and learn to question him and learn to uh, ask those questions that will settle your heart and help you believe uh, stronger than you thought you ever could. So speak aloud. Quiet your mind. Listen to him. When you pray, if you're praying for somebody, try it one time. Just quiet your mind and speak your prayer aloud. Just nice and quiet, just but, but uh, cross, if thoughts crossing your lips, and watch what God will do and watch how your life will change. Listen to me. Try it. Try it. And if you've had some good success or if you're struggling with it, um, email me. Get, get on my, my website, LarryLow.com, and uh, on there, there's a place that says contact us. Uh, go out there. And uh, send me a message. Let me know the success or lack thereof that you're having. And that'll give me an opportunity to question you and to help you. I want to work with you. I want to help you. I'm not just a resource uh, electronically and digitally. I want to become a real person to you. I've done this for many years for many, 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 many people. And through this process, you're going to learn how to whip those kinds of things that's going on in your head that's causing you uh, <laughs> to, to, to be a little nutty sometimes. <laughs> I, I fought those things when I was younger. Oh my goodness. And then I learned to communicate with God. And when that happened, my life became peaceful and wonderful. And yours will too. Folks, uh, thank you for listening. I appreciate you being on the other end of this recording. If there's anything I can do for you, again, go to my website, www.larrylow.com. Um, another access to the same website is www.genuinechristianity.org. And uh, that'll take you to the same place. But question. Ask me questions. Let's communicate, shall we? If you're enjoying what I'm teaching, if it seems to be resonating with you, also prayerfully consider while you're out there and contact me on my website to make a tax-deductible donation. Uh, put on, you know, th that'll help me continue to keep putting out messages that'll bless you and all your friends that are hurting. Call your hurting folks. Tell them I'm here for you, for them, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, like it and share it and subscribe to it so you know when I post again. So God bless you, friends. May, may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Peace to you. Until next time. God bless you, my friends.